The human genome is now fully sequenced, all of it. Whilst not identical to mine, or to yours, it is a human genome fully sequenced, telomere to telomere, T to T. Well, technically my hands right now. <laughs> but hang on, the book of life you said. Well yes, at least that is how it was first described to me when I first learned of DNA. DNA is the recipe book that gets read to make life. Or is it? Well anyway, the book is now complete and ready for us to read. But I have to warn you, whilst it's not quite an Agatha Christie, as I do love a good murder mystery, it is definitely a mystery book and likely full of many surprises. So in this video, let's talk about our book of life, what it includes and what it doesn't, and why maybe we shouldn't be calling it the book of life. So firstly, let's talk about DNA. How big actually is it? 25,902. Hmm, that sounds too small. Oh yeah, that's because it's my subscriber count. What I mean to say is 3.055 billion base pairs or 3,054,815,472 base pairs, apparently. DNA is made up of DNA nucleotides, of which there are four different ones, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine, ATCG. These are also referred to as the bases. And then DNA is double-stranded, A pairs with T and C pairs with G, and these are the base pairs. So given that each base is around 0.6 nanometers, 3 billion of them gives 0.6 times 10 to the minus 9 times 3 times 10 to the 9, so 0.6 times 3, 1.8 meters. Or you can round it up to 2 meters as most people do. So you have 2 meters of DNA in each of your cells. So that's a lot of sequence to sequence. In our human cells, we split this up into 23 pairs of chromosomes. And by we, I suppose I mean the process of evolution. But I'm going to tell you something, we've been able to sequence DNA for a long time now. So why is it only now completed? The first human genome was initially released 22 years ago. Shocking, right? But then not really. They did what they could and just left the challenging bits. It's kind of like when you wash up a pan. It's easy to get most of the grease off, but there was always those bits that are much harder to clean. So you just leave it and hope over time it will go. I am just going to point out quickly here that I do clean my pan fully. <laughs> this is merely what I observe from other students. And well, it's the same with DNA sequencing. Some sequences are easier to sequence than others. Yeah, literally. Ah. The reason repetitive elements like this are harder to sequence is because it's harder to then assemble the different sequencing reads. And so until recently, around 8% of the human genome hadn't been sequenced. And this remaining 8% is what has now been sequenced by this telomere to telomere consortium. But it wasn't just the telomeres, but also the middle of the chromosomes, the centromeric sequences, that are also challenging to sequence because they have repetitive elements, and also because they're quite heterochromatic, so very compacted, and so the tools used to digest DNA to then sequence it doesn't work so well. So they achieved this final bit of sequencing by using both long sequence reads that traverse long sequences, aiding the assembly of the sequences, in combination with high fidelity sequencing or shorter sequences, as the longer sequence reads, the higher the error rate, at least at the moment. So why is it cool to sequence the genome? Well, so you can sequence your partner's DNA and find out if they are compatible. 9.3 quite a catch. I am of course joking, because whilst there are things we can do with the genome sequence, there is a lot of things it doesn't tell us, the reference from the 1997 film Gattaca being an example. So what doesn't DNA tell us? Well, I really like the opening two lines of this review article. The genome sequence of an organism is an information resource unlike any biologists have previously had access to. But the value of the genome is only as good as its annotation. Annotation that bridges the gap from the sequence to the biology of the organism. So what is meant by annotation? Well, an annotation is extra information associated with a particular point, or in this case a sequence, or in this case a video. But that's just it. Extra information, information that we don't get from just sequencing the DNA. So what types of things do we annotate in the DNA sequence? Well, a biggie are genes. Sequences of DNA that code for proteins, 
as I won't overcomplicate things for now. But it may surprise you to know that only around 1.5% of the DNA sequence accounts for protein coding genes in humans, and that's not very much. And while some of the remainder are features I've mentioned earlier, such as these telomeres and centromeres, it also includes regulatory elements that are involved in the control of expression of genes. More space is given to regulating the human genes than to the genes themselves. Many regulatory sequences have also now been annotated, but some of this annotation is only possible by combining studies of the DNA sequence with other molecular biology techniques. For example, to see where different proteins bind, or the 3D structure of the DNA sequence. <laughs> These further studies are necessary to understand how the DNA is read, as, well, as you can imagine, sequencing doesn't read DNA, it just, well, sequences it. It would be like me writing out a passage from a Chinese textbook. Since I don't know Chinese, I can't interpret it. We don't speak the language of DNA either. It takes a complex mix of proteins, RNA, and small molecules to do it. But we're learning and getting better. The thing is, the genome is not understandable as the book of life until it is read through its translation into physiological function. Genes are blind to what they do, as indeed are proteins in higher structures such as cells, tissues and organs. This is a quote I've taken from The Music of Life by Dennis Noble, where he argues that there is no such program of life in DNA. Proteins are not the only molecules in biological systems that determine function. Function is also dependent on the properties of water, lipids and many other molecules that are not encoded by genes. And what the proteins do is not dependent on the instructions from the genes. It is dependent on the poorly understood chemistry of self-assembly in complex systems. They do what is chemically natural to them. All the missing information in the Book of Life is implicit in the properties of the environment in which genes operate. These are all slightly modified quotes I've taken from Dennis's book, and they all reinforce the same idea that we need to look at multiple components of a cell to really understand how life is operating. And this is best summarised in the quote by Sidney Brenner. I believe very strongly that the fundamental unit, the correct level of abstraction, is the cell and not the genome. So ultimately then, why should we care about this recent advance? Well, of course it's a great achievement, and what it proves is that it is possible to sequence the entire genome, not just the genes of every individual, though of course not right now given how long and expensive it would be. But it now enables comprehensive studies of genomic variation across the entire human genome, which we expect to further drive future discovery in human genomic health and disease. Also, as I didn't mention earlier, they use two X chromosomes here, not Y, sorry guys, but in theory it wouldn't be hard to also sequence it too. And then some other consequences I think we can use from this information is to think more about astrobiology. And yeah, this has been on my mind right now, partly because I just finished reading The Contact Paradox by Keith Cooper. But it raises the question of what is life? Is there something unique about our DNA sequence? Or is it possible to generate life using a different medium? And then the other application is CRISPR and gene editing. Building on what I said earlier, some genetic changes still depend on the environment. A simple change may have unintended consequences because we don't understand the other implications of the genome. So what is the take home? Well, the thing is we actually have a good annotation of the genome, at least enough to keep me entertained. And this oldish now review was right on point with how we go about thinking about genome annotation being in three categories. The nucleotide level, the actual DNA sequence, the protein level, what proteins are encoded by genes and how proteins interact with the DNA, and the process levels, more of the emergent properties of a cell. And I would argue that the process slash systems level is most valuable and where we are behind on in terms of progress, but it's also the hardest to achieve. And so, all in all, this really is a great advance to have the full human genome sequence. But where the applications to healthcare will come is from the full sequence of the diversity of the human genome, and the interpretation of what the sequence actually means. Another area that's really important to study for human healthcare is protein structure, and if you want to learn about the recent advances in this, then you should watch this video here. Otherwise, thank you to my Patreon supporters, and thank you for listening.